currently, modernity has made things very rational, very scientific, mm -hmm. very cold. And there's a massive yeah. form of rebellion from it, a kind of reactivity mm -hmm. of the bureaucracy of the calcification of modernity. Mm -hmm. uh, it, for me, there's something about creativity that goes beyond a reactivity. Mm -hmm. So creativity is not a reactivity. It's like, I have what I have on front of me and I'm trying to integrate. It's like integrating transcend. So integrating what modernity has allows us in terms of creativity, but also transcend that. Trans and um, that requires have developing our sense of consciousness and awareness of what, what we're placed in in terms like the culture we're currently living in like understanding the different components of that culture so you can actually be aware and conscious about it and start playing with it versus being a re reactive being reactive to it and in the world of artists there's a lot of reactivity often because there's a huge suffering of never feeling like you fit or you belong and you're marginal and i'm interested in actually channeling that that energy into a creative force versus a reactive force which is okay that is the reality we're currently dealing with and how do we how can we use art to transcend it both as a collective but also individually in our life you know what is the state of my life what am i dealing with how do i deal like how do i use art to grapple with my inner psyche inner stories and transcend those where am I locked in those stories and how can I transcend them? And what have you discovered that works for you in your process of? Um, one is that it's a very dialectic uh, dimension through the different parts of myself. There's parts which is I just like there's image or the sense of playing, you know, playing without even fully understanding what I'm playing with. And by do by taking action, it helps me bring awareness. So um, uh, for example, they would be wanting to play with certain myths of uh, maybe Pierrot, that, that figure of the uh, crying clown, um, or Ud, like the mythology of Oedipus, and it's kind of a bit at first a bit subconscious like why am I attracted to this narrative and etc and then there's like uh and playing with those brings awareness for me it's like oh I'm an inch there's something in me that is attracted by those myth or these archetype and then there's a uh so that would be bringing to awareness and from that there's a, a work of integration like okay how do I integrate that and then transcending and the transcendent can only happen after you brought awareness. So um, very concretely at the moment, the two archetypes that I really see in me is the, the dichotomy of the Madonna and whore. You know, it's a very classical thing about women of like either you're a Madonna, you're a good wife, you're a good daughter, you're a good mother, or you're a whore. And you can't possibly be both. And it created a lot of duality and, and fracture within myself because these two parts were not integrated. These two parts were at each other versus really dialoguing. And I was fascinated because I saw myself one night like scrolling for internet and watching really trashy YouTube videos of like, you know, the conservative woman, Republican woman with the hoe, talking to each other and it was like I could see those two parts of me talking at each other incarnated through actual real women that exist in the world and I just saw the amount of suffering that these two parts had and the the how imprisoning that was as an image for women to evolve around um and that had affected my my life quite a lot. And often it wasn't that society didn't give me those possibility. Is that because I have happened to live in Western Europe? I as a woman, I have a lot of freedom compared to many other geographical region. 
but I had integrated so much of these narrative of, you know, Eve, the guilty, um, all these, or psyche, what a good woman is to kind of like prove your love, uh, that a woman gets punished for wanting to know, like all these kind of archetype, I didn't realize how deeply they ran into me uh, through those sacred stories. Uh, well, these knees are also sacred stories for the secular man, by the way. We don't say it, but it is. All our kids watch some Walt Disney and they're there and they then have such a grip on us. And I then started to do certain performance, which are quite ceremonial and ritualistic to help m that allows me to free myself, but also free the free the audience, have the audience also have awareness of the mythologies they go through and how they want to free themselves. So I would say as an artist, you have to free yourself first before mm -hmm. you get to be able to free the others. Um, so yeah, that's one concrete example. Yeah, no, that's really beautiful. I think that's really helpful because we, you know we all have the archetypes and like the connection to to those and to the mythological stories that kind of run deep within us even if we don't allow ourselves to acknowledge that so I guess how do people start tapping into that how would you from a creative perspective how how could they start to connect with that type of energy um, and allow it to come through more for them Well, I guess first is a desire to inquire, to be in inquiry about life and uh, oneself. And second, for me, the form of art, um, well, you know, other people love, there's many paths to the inquiry about the meaning of life. Um, I have a specific uh, soft spot for art as a pathway to it, because I believe that the beauty of art, so that could be in the beauty of the stories or the aesthetic of a painting or this, the lyrics and the musicality of a song holds you. It helps you to be able to look in things that are not easy to look. Um, and that, that action of being held while being an inquiry, so you're not alone, you feel connected in life through that inquiry, I believe is an important connection. I believe human aspire to wholeness. And, and art can really offer that sense of wholeness, can really help us, support us in maintaining that connection to that sense of wholeness mm -hmm. and I have I suppose two two questions um one is related to the role of integration and how to how to work with creativity and integrating so whether that is integrating an experience um, an emotion or even from an artistic practice having had when I mean, taking that inquiry or had that realization how how can how do because integration is extremely important because otherwise you miss in essence the part that takes you through to the transformation so how does how does creativity how does honoring the artist within you support the in integration process so I think you're saying something really fundamental which is integration is key and I would uh, say that w another word for integration is insight which is very different from like uh, cold knowledge like I know you know I shouldn't get anxious about this and that and there's the insight of understanding where that anxiety comes from. And insight is something that touch you so deeply that, uh, that informs your way of being, a new way of being, a way of being that you otherwise in the past 
worn having. And it's the art of cultivating insight because insight would allow a new form of being that weren't available to you before that. And like everything, it's a practice in the sense that it's a muscle. You know, it's like playfulness is a muscle. Like you, joy is a muscle. Cult cultivating insight is a muscle. All these things happen through practice. Um, and if you haven't practiced for a while, of course, you're going to be a bit rubbish at it. That without a judgment of you as a being, it's like, I don't play very often soccer. Of course, I'm going to be really rubbish at it. But it's just, guess what? I can just keep practicing and get better. And um, and yeah, I guess that's that's the, the a, a key distinction, I would say, between knowing and insight. And insight is also, in my view, um, resting on a strong bed of observation mm -hmm. real deep observation of phenomenology of what is right here what is right here outwardly and innerly um and the the you know we're not alone on that journey many other human beings have been on that path before us and writing allows us, like writing is a time machine. Writing allows us to be connected to the past, to our ancestors, and also for us to be the ancestors of the future, to connect to the future, to tell them things. And our ancestors have done a lot of that work too in, in their cultural era. And they gave us a lot of tips and keys. Um, and of course, you got when you read what your ancestor have left us, and when I meant read, I don't mean just a, a reading a text. I mean reading a situation, for example. You got to always understand that they had a very different context, but yet there's something that doesn't change between them and us. That's why we can recognize is that they were human beings too. There's something utterly universal and timeless about our human condition. Um, and I find that um, these are treasures to help us on our path of collecting insight that are relevant right here, right now for us, but were, but are timelessly relevant. Um, it, like recently, I was reading the story of Ach 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 Achilles, Achille in French, Achilles. And um, and Achilles' mother is a goddess and she had to marry a mortal man. And that was a curse for her because she would have a mortal child. And so as her child was born, right, right when it was born, she already had to mourn. And there's something universal about that of a mother giving birth to a son and mourning her son as their children and and that is also in the story of uh, Mary and Jesus and that was also in the story of the myth and that's something universal because often when you give birth to a son they th your son will go to war and it's something of the act of giving life and mourning for life uh, that you give life you love it you you grow those children yet knowing they might not live. There's something um, beautifully tragic, but also about how we can't help ourselves but to keep creating life, uh, even if we're condemned to die. Yeah.